Good morning, folks. We've got two big stories on how space weather affects our lives. We drill down on a preposterous story about climate change and talk a bit of earthquake risk as well. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com, finding the last 24 hours on our star were exceedingly calm. Slightly more activity back here at Earth, but in terms of eruptions and solar flares, nada. Hello sunspot minimum. Meanwhile, the solar wind in geospace is intensified slightly from normal due to a weak, departed coronal hole stream. Geomagnetism is quiet at the moment, but you'll recall from yesterday that our focus must come to the currently Earth-facing coronal hole. Strongest on our star, its solar wind will arrive on Tuesday, and indeed before that we're in elevated seismic risk. Largest of the last day, both hit the Atlantic, and were not too large. We do have blot echoes nearby, approaching the Japan and Kuril area, and in Oceania, where we'll see atmospheric signals in a minute or two. They've also got creatures of the deep washing up in Queensland. Not exactly your oarfish look, but always disconcerting when the deepest creatures have an exodus. Let's go to this Arctic heat story. I must apologize for my frankness, but there is nothing in actual data to suggest any sort of warm-up is going on there. The North Atlantic is the furthest north out of the blue, which is all below freezing, and that is always warm due to the Gulf Stream. I show where to find this data every day, and going back through the days, I simply cannot find any cause for alarm or even the slightest shred of truth in that superheated Arctic story. Not that it matters with Russia and the U.S. and Europe taking brutal cold waves and snowstorms, but just wanted to drop a bit of truth on that one. Europe, NASA, doesn't matter which data set you use, there was no heat event at the North Pole. Up next, a study giving a deep dive into EEG data indicates that solar flares and geomagnetic storms affect multi-channel brain function such that we may now have a mechanism for the stress induction, cognitive diminution, and even seizures and migraine activity during those most powerful events. We've seen the statistical correlation dozens of times. Here is a possible mechanism of action. Today's top story, one we'll have to come back to in another episode for more detail and macro picture around it. Short version of the story is that Sumatra, Japan, Chile, biggest earthquakes on Earth show magnetic field variations before the event. Localized magnetometers could warn of every catastrophic thrust capable of causing about a magnitude 7 or higher quake. Again, more coming on this in another video soon. Wanted to quickly hit our top two weather alerts of the day. First one is in northern New Zealand as the cyclone approaches. It will arrive within 24 hours. Second one comes to the Gulf states this evening. Worst of it will begin in southern Louisiana and roll eastward through the evening time. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, we had a great Fly on the Wall podcast yesterday. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.